Thursday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. We have lots of important information to get out to you here this morning, so let's get right to it. We got a tornado outbreak likely with strong tornadoes, damaging wind, which could be hurricane force, and giant hail on Thursday into Friday. Then a winter storm system is likely across the Midwest and Great Lakes Saturday into Sunday this weekend, and then another big storm system next week with more heavy rain and severe weather possible. We'll get into those details later on in this video but if you guys are not yet subscribed to the youtube channel now is the time to subscribe to get all of my daily weather forecast updates each and every morning at 9 a.m on this channel i cover southern canada the united states and the tropics during tropical weather season so hit the subscribe button down below and do not forget to press the like button the thumbs up button down below the video each and every one of you guys press it it helps to save lives out there it also helps to get each and all of this information out to as many people as possible here across the platform so I definitely appreciate it but going through the day today this is a very crucial storm system we're talking about here we have a flash flood threat across portions of the Ohio River Valley and then a severe weather threat farther south across the Red River there into southern Oklahoma and west central Texas that we have to keep an eye on with this boundary as we see this here throughout the day today. So with this system, we have a trough out here across portions of the Four Corners region with a lot of uh, stronger winds in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. This is the mid-level jet, and you can see on the eastern side of this trough, a lot of these winds are going to be parallel to the boundary, so we are going to be seeing a lot of moisture moving northward, but with the winds parallel to the boundary, we will be talking about more of a widespread flash flooding risk. However, we also do have the threat for severe weather here across Oklahoma into Texas and much of the lower Missouri Valley as well, right along that frontal boundary where we see the cool, dry air from the north and the warm, moist air from the south meet up. And that is where we're going to see that battle zone going on. So the Storm Prediction Center has a marginal to slight risk for severe weather here from portions of southern Indiana, northwestern Kentucky, southern Illinois, getting into the lower portion of Missouri here. Then a much higher risk for severe weather includes northwestern Arkansas, much of southeastern and central Oklahoma into west central Texas. This does include the Tulsa region up here toward Fayetteville, Fort Smith, Arkansas, getting in towards Oklahoma City, west northwest of the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex on up there toward Vernon, Texas, Wichita Falls, Sherman, Texas, and then back to the west from there into western Texas. So the hazards from these storms could play out like this. We have a 5% shading here of damaging winds. That could be in excess of 60 miles per hour from the Carbondale region to Illinois, into Illinois all the way back through central Texas. This does include Oklahoma City, Tulsa, and the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We also have to be concerned about a large hail risk going through the evening and overnight hours, especially in this yellow shaded color and this hatched risk for hail across portions of southern Oklahoma to northwest Texas. So from Vernon over there toward the Wichita Falls region, Lawton, Fort Sill, Oklahoma, and the southern side of Oklahoma. Oklahoma City, we have to be concerned about those two inch or larger type of hailstones. So those golf ball size hailstones or larger in that hatched area of uh, hail going through that Thursday night time frame and the possibility of tornadoes. We're going to have a lot of lift, a lot of convergence right along that boundary, and that will produce some rotation. So we have a 2% shading of tornadoes from west central Texas on up through southeastern Oklahoma, northwest Arkansas, lower Missouri here into portions of southern Illinois through this evening. So let's look at this. So noon time frame, not too much going on right along the boundary, but as we get into this evening, we're going to start to see quick initiation, especially into southern Illinois, southern Missouri, Missouri getting through portions there, the Tulsa region and toward the Oklahoma City metro area, and then all the way down to the Red River there near North Texas. These storms initially will be supercell, so we're going to see a lot of large hail and potentially some rotating thunderstorms early on this evening. As we go into the overnight hours, this will start to transition more to a damaging wind threat and then probably even more so into a heavy rainfall threat up here across the Ohio River Valley back down here into lower Missouri, northwestern Arkansas into eastern Oklahoma. Some of these storms could still be producing some large hail, maybe some rotation, but you notice the storms don't really get going across portions of Texas down toward the DFW Metroplex or central Texas till well after midnight. So this is an overnight threat getting toward the morning hours here toward your morning commute on Friday, 6 
a.m., we're going to start to see some storms knocking on the doorstep there of Dallas-Fort Worth up there towards Sherman, Texas, and then into southeastern Oklahoma. These ones could be a little bit feistier, probably on a weakening trend as they move from west to east across the DFW Metroplex. But still, nonetheless, we still have to watch these because we're looking at the maximum updraft helicity here. And what we see with this is rotation within the atmosphere as you go up here into the low levels and you see a little bit of rotation with some of these storms across the Arkansas region here into northwestern Arkansas, east central portions of Oklahoma and to north Texas. Some of these storms could acquire some rotation and that's why the Storm Prediction Center has that 2% shading here in an elongated area from southern Illinois to central and western Texas with that tornado threat going in towards this overnight time frame. Then we have to worry about the flash flooding threat. This national National Weather Service offices already have widespread flood watches here from portions of western West Virginia, southern Ohio, northern Kentucky, southern Indiana, southern Illinois here, getting through much of lower Missouri, northern Arkansas, and much of eastern Oklahoma, all in these green shaded areas. That's where we expect a lot of flooding to take place here through the end of this week. And just from now through Friday morning, this is the area of concern right along that boundary here in the blue and purple shaded area for widespread one to three inch rainfall amounts with the heaviest of the rain likely falling across southern Illinois, lower Missouri, northwestern Arkansas, and the eastern Oklahoma here with the better source of moisture across these areas going into Friday morning. That's why we have that marginal slight and even moderate risk of flash flooding across southern and southwestern Missouri, extreme northwestern Arkansas, and in the northeastern portions of Oklahoma through that Friday morning time frame. So definitely watch out for flash flooding up here across the Ohio River Valley and the lower Missouri Valley through the Friday morning commute. Then as we go into Friday, another story. We have another setup here where we have the dangerous severe weather possible across the warm sector as we go in toward the day on Friday here with, again, a flush, flash flooding threat a little bit farther up to the north across the Ohio River Valley. So with the setup here, we're going to start to see more of a negatively tilted trough, or at least try to turn negatively tilted. A very powerful mid-level jet stream with this trough will be accompanying a cold front as we move across the Arklatex, Arklamis, and Tennessee Valley region on Friday. And we have the open warm sector. Dew points will be rising to the low middle 60s. You wouldn't even be surprised to see near 70 degree dew points down here across places like Lake Charles, New Orleans, or the Bowen. Beaumont region into Texas by Friday evening. And that's why we have the severe weather threat like it is on Friday. The Storm Prediction Center has made a, some large adjustments to this out, outlook here. They have actually upgraded a lot of this area to an enhanced risk and actually pulled this farther north and have upgraded to a moderate risk across southeastern Arkansas, northeastern Louisiana, and west central Mississippi. This includes the Jackson region, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, getting down toward Monroe, Louisiana. You definitely have to be on high alert if you live in those areas. A couple other areas here in the moderate risk zone will be the Greenville region here, Vicksburg, and then getting down here in toward the Natchez region in toward Mississippi. In the orange, that's a level three of five for severe weather. So Memphis, Jackson, Tennessee, getting up toward the Nashville region, Western Kentucky there northwestern portions of uh, Alabama and then getting up into northeastern Mississippi. Those are the areas at risk for some damaging winds, large hail and tornadoes. And even that severe weather threat will linger farther north into the flash flooding risk areas into the Ohio River Valley, into southern Illinois, southern Indiana, into portions of eastern Kentucky and southwestern Ohio through the day on Friday. Breaking down the severe weather hazards here on Friday, we have a 30% and even hatched area for 75 plus mile per hour winds. This is across eastern Arkansas. Arkansas, northeastern Louisiana, western Tennessee, and northwestern portions of Mississippi. These are for widespread hurricane force wind gusts. Then we have a large hail probability of a 5 to 15 percent shading all across much of the deep south, the Tennessee and Ohio river valleys here. Hailstones that could be over quarter size with some of the strongest storms. Then the most prevalent of the, of the hazards here is the tornado probability. We have a 10 to 15 percent shading and then hatched risk for tornadoes. So not not only do we have the chance or likelihood of tornadoes, but we also have the threat for strong long track tornadoes. So the ZF2 to EF5 type of tornado threat here on Friday evening and in toward Friday overnight time frame. 
So timing this out, 7 a.m. on Friday, that cold front will be moving into East Texas, right over the DFW Metroplex. 7 a.m., your morning commute, you're probably seeing some scattered showers and storms. Flash flooding threat will be ongoing to the north. That will continue to slowly push its way off to the east by noon time frame. You notice a lot of those areas in that moderate risk area into west central Mississippi, southeastern Arkansas, and northeastern Louisiana are still rain-free going through noon time frame. We're already going to start to build up that energy, that instability needed for thunder thunderstorms and then by the time we get toward the dinner time frame 6 p.m on friday these storms will be feisty we could have supercells out ahead of the main cold front producing long tracks strong tornadoes and then another punch of some damaging winds and large hail heavy rain with the actual cold front itself as it pushes from west to east across these areas that'll push across middle eastern tennessee getting up into central eastern kentucky all the way down through mississippi alabama here and toward the midnight time frame moving into saturday march 25th then as we go into to 6 a.m. on Saturday, March 25th. This cold front will be across the Mid-Atlantic and the Southeast. Maybe some lingering marginally severe storms across western Carolinas, the Atlanta metro area there into North Georgia and eastern portions of Alabama and towards your Saturday morning. So looking at this, the updraft helicity again, where we have the rotation in the lower levels of the atmosphere, you do see a lot more of the colors popping here on Friday. So we could also see some longer tracked strong tornadoes down here as well across Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, and even portions of Tennessee as well. So we definitely have to watch out for that kind of over overlapping that enhanced and moderate risk for tornadoes across the deep south and the flash flooding threat. Don't forget that we have more flash flooding possible Friday into Saturday now with the purple and uh, even red shaded colors here across the Ohio Valley, getting down and toward northern Arkansas, southeastern portions of Missouri, southern Illinois. These areas, we could see another widespread one to three inches of rain on top of what we even see today into Friday. This is Friday into Saturday and a more widespread zone of slight to moderate risk for flash flooding here across the Ohio River Valley Friday into Saturday. So you definitely want to heed any flash flood warnings out there. If you live near a river, you live near creeks, streams, and stuff like that, do be well aware of that as we go through this weekend. Then as we go into Saturday, this whole system starts to elongate a little bit. Still a pretty powerful mid-level jet, so we have to be concerned about more lingering severe weather. Probably lower end severe weather on Saturday, March 25th across South Carolina near the Columbia region, Atlanta, Georgia, getting down toward the Macon, Georgia region there, and then into portions of southeastern Alabama and northwest Florida toward the Pensacola, Tallahassee, and Panama City regions. Definitely have to be concerned about maybe some damaging wind, large hail, and maybe a brief spin-up tornado as well going into the day on Saturday. Farther to the north, we're going to see more wintry precipitation. So this is your 850 millibar low-level temperatures Saturday morning on the 25th. You can see just a little bit off the surface, we're going to still see some colder air mixing in, marginally cold air there, and especially northern Illinois. And as you see the near surface temperatures, this is what we feel at the, here pretty close to the surface where we live. And temperatures will be in the upper 20s, if not low to mid 30s out here with a little bit more of the mid 30s in towards Northern Illinois and Southeastern Iowa by Saturday morning. And looking at how snow forms. So when snow forms, you have to have that cold layer from the cloud base itself all the way to the surface to get snowfall. But for sleet, you have that snow falling out of the cloud base because it's cold enough, but you have that shallow warm layer layer aloft in the mid-levels and then it turns more of that deeper cold layer as you get closer toward the surface. Some of this precipitation falling could be a sleet as we get in towards the day on Saturday. So 7 a.m. on Saturday, the morning commute out here, probably some heavy rain or at least heavy rain and snow mix across northern Illinois into portions of southeastern Iowa. We'll start to see a narrow band of some heavier wet snowflakes start to fly across portions of Madison, Wisconsin, back toward the Davenport Quad City, Cedar Rapids, Iowa City, those places getting into Saturday morning. That will lift up across northern lower Michigan, the UP of Michigan here in eastern Wisconsin, so Milwaukee to Green Bay probably seeing your fair share of some snow by mid-afternoon on Saturday. That will push across southeastern Canada by 7 a.m. the morning commute on Sunday with maybe some snowflakes up across portions of Maine, uh, northern portions of Vermont, New Hampshire with more of the rainfall farther south into the I-95 corridor overnight Saturday into Sunday. Looking at the total snowfall accumulation from Friday through the Sunday time frame, so just this weekend from the 24th through the 26th, a widespread zone of about one to three inches of snow generally. There 
could be some isolated pockets, say, into southern Wisconsin, eastern Iowa, northwest Illinois there that could see potentially over three inches of snow. But a lot of this will be uh, accumulating just on grassy surfaces. So we may see some accumulation on the roadways, especially untreated roads. But I think most of this will be on grassy surfaces. And the same goes true for Michigan here and into southeastern portions of Canada and much of the northeast that sees snow getting through this weekend. Then another system comes along here as we head into Sunday. We got another boundary setting up across the central Gulf Coast states in the southeast. This will be more of a heavy rainfall threat, maybe some isolated severe weather, certainly not what we're seeing today or tomorrow for severe weather. That's some good news, but still some unsettled times across the deep south getting into Sunday. That system pushes across the east coast with some lingering rain on Monday into Tuesday. And then our next system, that's the system I'm watching going into next week. That'll be pushing across the west coast and the Pacific Northwest getting into Tuesday, March 28th. This system is going to start to produce more rainfall. So we've had a lot of rain in California and the west coast. We're going to see more rain coming up early next week, Monday through Wednesday next week. More heavy rain across northern central portions of California here. And this is going to lead to more one to three inch rainfall amounts here and even some heavier rain for Western Oregon as well, averaging around one to two inches there in some of those spots. And then that boundary across the central Gulf Coast states, we could have another one to three inch rainfall event there going into early on next week. And the storm to the west, we're going to have more upper elevation support for the heavy snowfall. So we're going to have more cold air aloft. We're going to have more snowfall falling early next week. So if you live in towards the Sierra Nevadas here or northern California and those higher elevations, Thank you. Get ready for another dumping of one to two feet or more of snow going into early next week with this system. And you can see that by Thursday, this system is going to be lingering across the west. We got a deep trough digging all the way south to Southern California, Arizona, and Northern Baja of uh, California as well on Thursday, March 30th. That will eventually eject up here across the upper Midwest and the central Great Plains as we get into late next week to end the month of March on Friday, March 31st. And what this this will do is ahead of the system it's going to be pulling up a lot of this warm moist air we're going to have temperatures um, rising into the 60s 70s and 80s across much of the central southern plains and deep south on thursday same holds true into friday except we start to pull this a little bit farther north than we've seen with the past storm tracks up into the at least the lower midwest in the ohio valley with the 60s and 50s out here as we get in towards next Friday. We also have a deeper moist sector with this system. Dew points will be rising to the 50s as far north as Nebraska, southern Iowa with 60s farther to the south, and same holds true on Friday with that deep warm sector potentially going as far north as Chicago or Milwaukee. That will pull them uh, dew points up into the 50s and 60s potentially as far north as eastern Illinois, central Indiana, and southwestern Ohio during that time frame. We also have to watch the kinematics with this system here. Again, it's a little far out, but you still see there's some strong mid-level uh, you know, southwesterlies in the jet stream here Thursday into Friday to end the month of March. And this is concerning for a severe weather potential, at least across the central and southern plains, maybe parts of the lower Missouri Valley as we head into that late week period, namely Thursday and probably into Friday as well, farther north and east across the Ohio Valley. We'll be highlighting that as we get a little bit closer. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I definitely appreciate it. Remember to like the video down below, give it a thumbs up leave any comments questions and concerns below i'll get to those later on today subscribe to the youtube channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel have a very safe next couple of days guys with all the severe weather across the south and the flash flooding and i will see you all in the next video